orbital analyst with JSPOC. Joe, exactly what is JSPOC? So the JSPOC is the Joint Space Operations Center. It is U.S. STRATCOM's operation center that's in charge of uh, space and things that go through space, or is, is resident in space. Currently, there are just a little under 20,000 objects that the JSPOC tracks. Those are on-orbit objects to include active satellites, pieces of debris, the rocket bodies that place the satellites in orbit, as well as anything that travels through space, test vehicles, things of that nature. We're going to be launching some CubeSats today. Exactly how do you track something that small once it's released from the vehicle? So the JSPOC uses a network of sensors, a mix of optical sensors and radar sensors, uh, to track those objects. So while a CubeSat, a 3U CubeSat, which is rather small, we're still able to track them. They present a, a smaller profile than some of the larger, more familiar satellites, like a GPS satellite or a communication satellite, but they are trackable. You actually track the debris in space so that when satellites like SMAP are launched, they are delivered safely to orbit. And when the CubeSat secondary payload is released, they're not going to collide with anything. Correct. So the JSPOC receives trajectory information from the safety office here at Vandenberg. We take that information and we put it into our software suite. It compares those trajectories against the predictions of all the other objects on orbit, and that helps us ensure that when we do launch SMAP, that it arrives safely to its intended orbit. You just, like, plug it in, and it's like, return, and it comes back, uh, this is good? Correct. You know, the farther out you're trying to predict, the more uh, computing horsepower it's going to take to do it. Uh, but we typically will do uh, a screening about seven days prior to the launch uh, to get the first look at what that launch window might actually look like. And, you know, when you're looking at your screen and you're looking at the debris and the satellites in space, does it look similar to that of, like, the airplanes across the United States where you just see all these dots? It is similar in some screens. Yes, some screens will present a, a host of dots. Uh, each dot will represent an observation uh, that one of the sensors in the network has taken. It'll string those together into a visual profile of where that object has been and the software suite will then propagate where we expect the object to be in the future. Now, there are different orbits around the Earth. Do you know where, uh, like, the CubeSats are, where the satellites like uh, your Direct TV and DISH networks are located? Are they in different uh, orbits, or are they just all clumped together? So they're in a host of different orbits. Uh, the orbit is generally determined by what the nature of the spacecraft is. So your Direct TV satellites, for example, that are beaming down your television, those will be in a geostationary orbit. They may paint a fixed position over the United States, for example, so that you can get reliable and continuous coverage. Other satellites, communication satellites, will be in geostationary orbit as well. Satellites that might take pictures of the Earth, or your Google Maps, for example, those will be in a lower orbit, a low Earth orbit, so that you can get a good quality picture. In what orbit will the CubeSats be located? The uh, main payload for this mission, SMAP, is going to be in a low Earth sun synchronous orbit, and the CubeSats will be placed in a very similar orbit after the deployment of the primary vehicle. So when these CubeSats have finished their missions and they just fall back to Earth or burn up in the atmosphere, do you all just like cross them off the log that they are no longer in orbit? So in a way, we do just cross them off the list. As the projection, the prediction for where that satellite will be reaches certain parameters, we'll receive indications that it might be re-entering soon. Once that happens, we'll continue to refine those predictions so that we can try to get uh, the most accurate date and time that we can for when that object should re-enter. And then once we can confirm that it has re-entered, we will add a decay date in the catalog, and that uh, kind of is the period at the end of the sentence for that, uh, for that satellite. Now, the information that you get as far as the location of this uh, CubeSats when they're in orbit, is that the same type of information you share with the universities and the different organizations that put CubeSats in orbit? It is, yes. Uh, the JSPOC has a Space Situational Awareness Sharing Program, SSA Sharing, uh, and a lot of information, uh, mainly two-line element sets, are put out uh, for the public, for research organizations, other governments, other companies, to share that information to make space a safer place for uh, all of those that have objects in it. And now we're joined 